Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you're watching this video, it is because you are interested in taking the Foreign Service Officer Test. Four years ago, I did a Just Take the Test video, and it has, I think, over 15,000 views now. Uh, and there's been a huge change in the process to becoming a Foreign Service Officer. Uh, just over a month ago, the Secretary announced that you don't have to pass the test initially. Uh, your test score will uh, be a part of the process, but the pass or fail that has been long standing is no longer applicable. Before I get into all that, I just want to read the statement. Uh, this came out April 26th, so you hear it straight from the State Department's website, uh, and then I'll get into the differences and what it means for you. To meet the Secretary's goals to modernize American diplomacy, uh, win competition for talent, and ensure all applicants can present a full picture of their individual qualifications, the Department of State is announcing improvements to the Foreign Service selection process. The Department is moving away from the Foreign Service Officer Test, FSOT, uh, as a pass or fail gateway test and expanding a focus on a candidate's education and experience for a more holistic approach in the selection process. Starting with the June 2022, which is just here in a few days, uh, test takers, all candidates will proceed to the QEP, Qualification Evaluations Panel, where their performance on the F FSOT will be one factor taken into consideration along with the personal narrative submitted during the registration process. Uh, combined scores from the FSOT and the uh, QEP, Qualification Evaluations Panel, uh, which reviews each candidate's work history, education experience, and six brief written narratives based on Foreign Service core precepts, will give the department a more balanced view of candidates who will be selected for the next phase of the selection process, the Foreign Service Oral Assessment. This is the most significant change to the Foreign Service selection process since 1930. Uh, we anticipate that this change will, will result in identifying a more qualified pool of applicants. So if you go back and watch the last video, I said just take the test. Now you have even more reason to take the test. Because even if you don't get a score maybe that you are comfortable with or whatever, there's no more pass or fail. You will get a score, you will submit your narratives, you will, uh, um, your, your narratives, you will submit your resume and all the other information that they request in the application process, and you'll get a whole look. Maybe you lived overseas, maybe you were in the military, maybe you just got out of college or grad school, whatever. Everybody's going to get a look as a, a totality of your experience and you as a person combined with the Foreign Service Officer Test score. I took the test in 2010. I failed it miserably. I knew walking out of the test center that day I didn't pass, and then I got the score a, a little bit after. Now you don't have to worry about that so much. Go in, do the best you can, submit all the information, and see what happens. And if you don't get selected or forward, forwarded to um, the Foreign Service Oral Assessment, the FSOA, then you just try again next year. As I said in the first video, four years ago, lots of people, it takes them multiple times. But now you have a little better advantage because it's not just pass or fail with the test right off the bat. I'm going to put a bunch of links below, including a link to this statement from the Department of State uh, Office of the Spokesperson. Uh, a friend of mine named Jack runs a website called Path to Foreign Service. I highly suggest joining. You can meet a bunch of uh, like-minded people there. Uh, there's practice for the personal narratives, for the test, which track or cone you should take. It's, it's, it's everything you need to, to kind of really connect with the people that are trying to become a Foreign Service officer like yourself. And as I said in the first video, if you want to go back and watch it, just take the test. Register. I'll have that link below. To, to, to go in and put all your information and get the ball rolling. I'm, uh, I'm here in Phnom Penh. It's late May. The window for the Foreign, Foreign Service Officer test is open, I think, for another week or so. If you end up watching this video six months, a year, two, three, four years from now, there's always windows throughout the year where you can register for the test. And that's why I decided to do Just Take the Test Part 2 video, follow up to the one I did four years ago, because things have changed, but to your advantage. Uh, I'm heading back to D.C. here in a few months to begin my third tour, uh, enjoying life. The pandemic was tough. Um, I hope this channel, my YouTube channel, my blog, and my website, I'll have the links to those below, although you're probably watching this on YouTube, um, provide a good insight as to what this life is like. There's up, there's, there's downs, there's plus, there's minuses, uh, but it is a fulfilling, rewarding, rich career in life. That's why I make these videos. 
And uh, with the change to the process of how you become a Foreign Service Officer, I thought there was no better time to do a part two of just take the test. I wish you nothing but the best. Uh, keep an eye on my videos. I'll have more coming. And uh, I hope to see you in the Foreign Service someday.